Amazonide technology. Go to InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com to get started with OxyPowder or call 1-888-253-3139. From the water table to our soils to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. When you're out on the road, the last place you want to be is on the road. But if the unfortunate happens, you'll be glad you were wearing diamond gussets. There's a place down in Tennessee where they make blue diamond gusset jeans. They so pride in every stitch. Guarantee you love the way they fit. Put a diamond gusset in the crotch where you need it most. Blue diamond gussets got it. Others don't. We turn jeans inside out. Diamond gusset jeans. Made in the USA with unparalleled quality. Our Defender motorcycle jeans combine gusset comfort with Kevlar protection. So you can ride all day with confidence. Order yours at gusset.com. Diamond gusset jeans got it. Others don't. General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks. I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security on sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed to do. If you watch, the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the Info War to the next level. Coast to coast, direct from Austin. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. Thanks for joining us, my friends. We're now 30 minutes into this worldwide broadcast. The entire second hour is going to be jam-packed with very important world news and information. But I wanted to go over a few of the reports that our InfoWars Nightly News team have been filing from everything with NFL brainwashing uh, to no-knock warrants getting police officers killed. It's all coming up. Urban Outfitters has been forced to apologize for what some are calling an exploration in tastelessness. The retailer attempted to sell a vintage Kent State University sweater complete with tattered edges and red blood-like stains, offering a loose slouchy fit for those who wish to trivialize the loss of life. In 1970, students across the U.S. were protesting Nixon's widening of the Vietnam War into Cambodia. Nixon sent the National Guard to restore order to the Kent State campus. On May 4, 1970, four people were killed and nine wounded when the National Guard opened fire on student protesters, firing 67 rounds over a period of 13 seconds. Witnesses couldn't believe that the guardsmen weren't shooting blanks. Now, many guardsmen later testified that they were in fear for their lives, which was questioned because of the distance between them and the students that were killed or wounded. And Time Magazine later concluded that triggers 
weren't pulled accidentally at Kent State. Now, store officials insist that they never intended to allude to the tragic events of the Kent State massacre, and they promptly removed it from their website to avoid further upset. Urban Outfitters' offensive deal serves as a reminder that protesters are still enemy number one to the state. When protesters took to the streets of Ferguson, Missouri last month to protest the shooting of unarmed teen Michael Brown by a police officer, Ferguson PD rolled out the big guns. Literally. While protesters held signs and chanted, hands up, don't shoot, the PD moved in with MRAPs and fired upon protesters and reporters alike with a barrage of tear gas, rubber bullets, wooden bullets, flashbang grenades, and sound cannons, all in an effort to stifle the First Amendment rights of those who were fed up with an abuse of authority. Tear gas, which is barred from use during war, but apparently it's completely perfect to use on demonstrators here in America. When police fired tear gas on protesters in Oakland, California during the Occupy Wall Street protests, peaceful protester and two-time Iraq War veteran Scott Olson sustained a skull fracture from a police projectile. And after this cop was filmed discharging pepper spray at a line of seated demonstrators at UC Davis, former officer John Pike won more than $38,000 in a worker's comp case against the school, claiming he suffered anxiety and depression after video outrage. The FBI even planned to assassinate the leaders of the Occupy movement via suppressed sniper rifles. This was according to an FBI document obtained by the Partnership for Civil Justice Fund via FOIA request. Now, although the document is redacted, it clearly shows that the FBI planned to gather intelligence against the leaders of the protest groups, then formulate a plan to kill the leadership via suppressed sniper rifles. Now, news of an FBI plot to murder political activists doesn't come as a surprise to those who are familiar with COINTELPRO. The FBI's COINTELPRO program of the 1960s and 70s aimed to frighten dissidents and disrupt their movements, enabling the FBI and police to eliminate the leaders of mass movements without undermining the image of the United States as a democracy. Now, according to the official narrative, COINTELPRO was terminated in 1971, but that is clearly not the case. For years, the government has been using anti-terror laws to crush dissent. NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden wrote about the NSA's spying programs, saying, these programs were never about terrorism. They're about economic spying, social control, and diplomatic manipulation. They're about power. Attorney General Eric Holder announced Monday another spying program that he claims is aimed at fostering community and local outreach efforts to combat the message of extremist groups such as ISIS. But we know this isn't about ISIS. Exclusive photographs provided to InfoWars earlier this month from a local business owner show an FBI PowerPoint presentation placing homegrown groups at the top of the agency's terror watch list. NSKSLA News 12 Jeff Bell discovered the clergy would help the government with potentially their biggest problem, us. For the clergy, one of the biggest tools that they will have in helping calm the public down or obey the law is the Bible itself, specifically Romans, Romans 13. By conflating political dissidents with terrorism, local, state, and federal law enforcement can pursue activists simply for challenging government policy. And as history shows, the establishment has no problem using violence to subdue opposition. Imagine this scenario. It's about 5.30 in the morning and you hear the rustling of a window. Maybe you pick up a firearm and you walk through your dark house to investigate. You turn the corner and what do you find? Multiple armed men climbing in through said window. You open fire on the men, hitting three, killing one. And then you find out that despite these criminal tactics, these are in fact police officers and now you, the homeowner, are facing a murder charge. Such is the case of Marvin Guy of Texas. Police entered the home looking for drugs. They did find drug paraphernalia, but not the drugs that they were looking for. What about the case of Ryan Frederick of Virginia? A police informant had burglarized his home and then when told law enforcement that he had witnessed a growing operation of marijuana. 
The police raided the home, but Frederick, logically thinking that the burglar had returned, opened fire on a man he saw kicking in his front door. It happened to be a police officer, and now Frederick is facing 10 years in prison for voluntary manslaughter. The police did recover some marijuana, but it turns out that Frederick isn't exactly the Rick Ross or Scarface of Mary Jane. But common sense does sometimes prevail, such as in the case of Henry Goldrich of Texas. Texas sheriffs busted into his house with a no-knock raid at the end of 2013, but Goldrich, thinking that logically a burglar was coming into his home, opened fire on the sheriffs, killing one of them. The murder charge was eventually dropped, but Goldrich still had to contend with drug and weapons allegations. The shock and awe tactic of the no-knock raid is self-defeating in my personal opinion. Why can't we go back to the old days where an officer would come knock on the door at a decent hour, maybe another officer out back in case the suspect took off, instead of riding around in these black war wagons, giving the police a false sense of security. They find out the hard way that all it takes is a few well-placed shots to evade all that body armor. You can find more reports at InfoWars.com. Apple has announced that they will no longer unlock most phones or iPads for police, even with a search warrant. Rather than comply with binding court orders, Apple has reworked its latest encryption in a way that prevents the company or anyone but the device's owner from gaining access to user data that's typically stored on phones or tablets. With this latest upgrade, Apple will no longer be able to bypass your passcode, making it technically impossible for them to respond to government warrants. But not so fast. This all amounts to little more than Apple realizing that they're losing money by alienating customers who think that they've been all too willing to hand over their private data to the government. With the iOS 8, Apple absolves itself of any outright spying compliance by appearing to offer more rigorous security. If you're a person who's concerned about privacy, you'll buy their product and not the competitors, right? Your user data can still be accessed. Most people already back up their phones to iCloud. Apple will still have the ability and the legal responsibility to turn over user data that's stored elsewhere, such as in its iCloud service. Users who want to prevent all forms of police access to their information will have to adjust settings in a way that blocks data from flowing to iCloud. But even that is not enough to stop the feds from accessing your private data. Rogue cell phone towers that have been popping up all over the country are already being used to clandestinely access your mobile devices. Meanwhile, as the media is focusing all of its attention on the fact that malicious hackers have stolen nude photos from celebrities, the fact that police are using this very same software is completely overlooked. Now, Apple's latest move to convince buyers that it's not actively participating in this surveillance panopticon by offering stronger encryption is little more than deception. It's just going to keep those slaves lining up to buy its products. The government's Department of Homeland Security is buying up loads of ammo. At the same time, they're restricting civilians' rights to own and purchase firearms. Can you put two and two together? Infidel body armor can stop every round, including hollow points and 308 sniper rounds. Is reasonably priced and fully legal. But for how long? Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com, spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L BodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. I jump out of bed ready to fight these criminals every day. I look forward to waking up and taking my Super Male Vitality. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must 
must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must-have for every modern, independently-minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency.